Hey everybody, welcome to the D-Files. My name's Jorge, and I'm here to read some bullshit legal copy for you so we don't get sued by all you idiots out there who are buying absolute <laughs> coins for no apparent reason. Everything here is not... You mean, po- wait, what type of... Political advice. Vote for whoever you want, <laughs> or you shouldn't vote at all. I don't give a Let's start the show. TBC, thank you so much for that piece of auditory bliss. We will never forget it. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching The Deep Files. You should definitely consider liking and subscribing if you can. And I also want to mention that this show is brought to you by Beefy, the multi-chain yield optimizer located on 20 different chains with some of the most competitive yield in all of DeFi. If you got crypto, consider using Beefy. And with that being said, nothing here is financial or legal advice. So make sure you do your own research, consult a financial advisor or lawyer. Anyways, with that being said, enjoy the show. By the way, you could fix this in the edit, right? I can't. I could definitely fix that in the edit, but I won't. It was too beautiful, right, too masterful, absolutely wonderful. So after that, just want to remind you guys that this show is by beefy the multi-chain yield optimizer located on more than 19 chains including zk sync for all 20. of you experimenting yeah, it's right 20. Now. Get, it, get it right all right fine I'll do why it do again. you forget about hecko i Come just on. thought saying zk sync would don't be pretty neat forget about hecko don't forget about harmony don't forget about the dead chains that. they're coming back, oh my baby. god dead <laughs> chain summer is coming hashtag it i'm hashtag miles it. Deutsche you... told me to my face like like brother, I hope you know that I think harmony is a dead chain. I think you should stay away from it, friend. I was like, somebody just yeah. talked to me about harmony coming back. Like, hey, don't sleep on harmony. I go, they have like a hundred million dollar like hole to dig out of. Like, just don't sleep on it. Dude, that's, like, that's I don't one sleep meme on it. coin. What are you talking about? I've we s- can fix that in no time. I mean, Dang, any anything. Who knows? I think anything is possible, but it's highly unlikely, in my opinion. I don't know. Anything can happen. Anything yeah. can happen in crypto. Anything can Anything. happen in crypto. <laughs> you know, let's segue. Well, last if, year has taught you taught you better. Let's go. Let's yeah. not forget. It's like, a, it's like a movie script. Anything can happen in crypto. So speaking of anything, let's talk about the, I guess, should I say underdog story? Overdog story? I don't know. So meme coins have been blowing up like crazy ever since uh, this entire a colossal traction of Pepe going doing what 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 was it like over a ten thousand X or something like that from ten thousand a ten thousand dollar market cap all the way what was it five billion six billion I don't know I don't really care about meme coins but this one was so big I wanted to get your thoughts on Pepe meme coins in general how the market reacted how the social media personalities reacted give me your wisdom or is it Pepe I because that that is the thing I care about the most is how do we pronounce it. I've seen a lot of different opinions and people are very annoyed that it's called Pepe and it's not PP. So TVC, can you clarify this for me? I got I got to be honest. I had no idea what the hell was going on the last <laughs> week and a half. I don't I don't know what the hell Pepe is. I don't understand the meme culture. I was I'm still trying to figure out my lady. If someone could help me out with that as well. Is it Milady or is it my lady? See, this is where I'm lost. I don't know. I'm watching Downton Abbey it's and Milady, I'm just going to go with It's what? I'm not British, I so I have no idea. Did you see they made an ERC twenty version of it? So I, essentially, like it's like a representative, like fungible version of Milady. What the hell oh, are you talking wait. about? I forgot it's called, about like, that. Lady. Yeah, yeah. What and is it's, like, it? Always like a, it, it, it's a like a ERC version, like it's ERC twenty version of the Milady NFTs. So like, oh, that, stop. Essentially, okay. you have it's NFTs. Um, we that, don't talk about that. Fractional... Let's go back to Pepe. <laughs> That's so, a lady you just brought it up. I didn't know what it was. It's an NFT. Well, Whatever. I don't care. We don't talk just, NFTs on the show. That's, NFTs. I, I know, listen. I know. Listen. Jorge, calm down. What? I'm I trying. I, just relax, okay? I'm not passionate down. about NFTs and stuff. My I'm point not that here passionate is, about just NFTs. Relax. I'm what? literally trying to teach Binance how to use NFTs for something other than uh, JPEG trading cards. It's not working. What are you rolling your eyes for? It's well, we I mean we we haven't started, but we're starting that. We're but trying. I mean, like, it, it's a real, real use case, right? Like it's the I, proper I think, use like, case. Both, okay, as a DAO, right? It's very hard for the DAO to sign legal agreements. So if there was a way for a DAO to sign a legal agreement in an NFT version, and saying like as the DAO, like through like the multisig or whatever that the DAO represents, and be able to like some having some sort of a, a, a binding agreement that way. 
then that would be sort of revolutionary, right? Something that's not done before. And I think as like DAO framework starts to develop and we, you know, Web2 companies, normal companies need to start interacting with DAOs instead of requiring one person to take on the sole responsibility of the entire DAO. Now we can have like the DAO sign like a, like be a multi-sig, like an NFT or something like that. That's what yeah. TBC is referencing. But, uh, I... but instead we have to stick with stupid JPEGs and your, your NFTs are worth nothing. Okay. Facts. Why? Well, would, would you I, buy I... art? Well, Would I'd I like buy to art? Say... No, I don't buy art. Art is just one of the largest money laundering scams out there. I understand how to work like a photocopy machine or a printer or anything, so I can just print it out. It's all the same. I don't. I'm not high class like you. I don't go to museums and stare at. Uh, wait, we're gonna have to cut. But you have zero culture. You're no, just no, hold on. I was gonna go with. Uh... Oh my god, I'm... it's because I'm slightly drunk. Well, I just want to say briefly that where I think. Uh, NFTs could really be useful in the short term, especially with, you know, the rise of artificial intelligence, chat, GPT, mid journey, and all this other stuff is that since an NFT is just a piece of code that's immutable and on a blockchain, that could possibly be used as a way to identify yourself as a human when you're creating a certain piece of a document or a certain piece of work, or even be a way for a human to access, say, a certain type of software that the creator of set software is trying to avoid a piece of AI trying to learn or steal information from it. So I think like that's going to be a more practical use in the, in the near future. But for the time being, I mean, they're no different than like people paying $500 for a pair of Nikes online and then reselling them for 1500 bucks. And I don't think there's anything Actually, wrong okay. with that. Okay. You, you have like so many different things <laughs> we could talk about in that like one <laughs> sentence. I know. First, you I sound know. like you're like you're talking about like Worldcoin, right? Where they're like scanning your retinas and then like uploading it into the blockchain. I didn't go that far. Is, I'm just saying a way to identify that is, a no, person. That's like actually going on. Like you can go to like a mall. I think in like I don't know somewhere in Africa. Oh, it's like, Rothko. Oh, it's it's Roth. Roth. There we well, go. Go back. Cut all that out. And I'm talking about what was that? Go into modern museums, staring at a Rothko, like you're so smart and better than us, Wezo. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> So you can, they give you like, the, like, here, come here, come here, come here. We're going to scan your eyeballs and forever have them and we'll give you $20. What? Oh, that new world, that order, world order scam out there? Get yeah, out of yeah, here with that. world coin coin or something. You like world that. coin people are a bunch of scammers for the new world order. It, Get was, out the here. 20, it was like the 20th like most popular. People are what, stupid, all right? Like. People are stupid. Stop buying mm -hmm. NFTs. Use them for actual purposes. Stop buying uh, one world oh. government tokens. Mm -hmm. I'm done with you uh, people. Okay. But can yeah. I talk about something else? With yeah, NFTs continue, with so. Continue. Okay. I did see something that was interesting. At one I wonder of the if I could get an NFT of Rothko. Hold on a second. I don't even know, I don't even know what that is. Um, <laughs> so somebody was actually, so like uh, like sneakerheads, right? Are you a <laughs> sneakerhead for you? No, not really. No? Okay. No, no, for real. But like I'm people not... who collect sneakers, right? It's a huge market. Yeah, And so absolutely. there was actually an organization that was, they bought a warehouse and you like send them the sneakers. They like issue you a, like an NFT, and then you have like this marketplace of like sneaker NFTs that you can redeem for the sneakers from the warehouse. So essentially, like creating like a, a sneaker marketplace uh, via NFTs. Yeah, I just thought that was like an interesting actual use case of of NFTs, and why we can't like start doing this with like ticketing and everything else that exists out there. I I, I see a hundred percent happening. I mean, it's also a way to verify that you actually did something like all the PO apps that they're creating for just visiting different types of PO apps, crypto events and whatnot. Is it PO up? Is that yeah. how you say it? PO apps? PO apps. I've been saying it wrong for PO up? <laughs> that's what... yeah, I remember when they first appeared and I, we all, that's all we talked about. They're like, Hey, you want to do this Pope PO up? I'm like, what? Oh, no, if you ever no. Just, just like, say hey, I don't want to do. If you call, <laughs> listen, if you come to Beefy and you're like, "Hey, let's do an NFT," the answer is no. Go away. I want to partner with no NFTs. I just, I'm sorry. I don't care what the DAO says. No NFTs. No spaceships. No. No. Okay, popes. back to PP Coin. Um, did you see that the Coinbase released the email or something like that, saying that it was like some alt right? <laughs> Oh, about Pepe. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. And then the legal guy from Coinbase had to send a tweet and said, sorry, like, it was our insurance who said that. That was where I don't agree with this. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, no wonder I... why it sold so well. 
Hey, they feel, they feel. <laughs> we forget. Was it the what was the name of the artist, the original artist that created Pepe? Because he it was Rothko. Uh, What's the matter with you? No, I'm just talking about the whole Rothko. Time. Hold on, uh, Pepe, creator. Did I think his did name is Pepe Neil. Isn't he going to be sued for copyright infringement because he doesn't even? He doesn't. That's what I think you. He doesn't even own the Pepe stuff, right? I cannot. There's a lawsuit coming. Okay, I cannot anyway, remember the name of this guy. Why are Regardless. we talking about this? Next. Okay, no, no. no before we lose one track, mean, there's one more meme coin issue that we need to talk about. Yes, and that's Ben Coin. Oh, what? because the stupid BitBoy guy. <laughs> oh, that decided oh, that him and five other Ben scam artists are going to create Ben Coin, and has been pumping it nonstop on his Twitter. <laughs> And then somebody does bet him that, like, in a year from now, uh, five Bitcoins or whatever, that his Ben coin is not going to be higher in market cap than it is currently. And I just can't believe right now the amount of, like, we were just talking about it a little bit earlier with the, the Twitter and, like, the influencers are, like, right. trying to take advantage of this whole, like, meme market, I guess, mm-hmm. over the last couple of weeks. And now you have, like, Ben Bitboy. Uh, hey, uh, hey, essentially. I mean, <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna. We're gonna have to run this by legal. So many, so much <laughs> like Ben Bitboy, <laughs> <laughs> essentially saying, "Go buy my token," just so that they can dump on MetaMask and pay you know point eight seven five percent fees or whatever because he doesn't know how to use actual DeFi. I mean, I think I. I mean, if if I could just say something briefly, I just think that 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 whole choice is incredibly unethical. Like, yeah, you know, it, yeah. look. For anyone watching this show, here's what's wrong about the whole thing, about everything. Like, if the person, <laughs> like, there are social media personalities out there that are going to talk about stuff and not tell you that they have that asset in their bag or that they're receiving some type of sponsorship for it. And, like, that type of behavior is unethical. And if the person puts their name on a coin and just says it's a meme coin and is pumping it like crazy, probably that guy owns most of the supply. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I I just for oh transparency, I I own some tokens, but I don't I don't even know what I own, so I don't care. But I'm waiting for well, a scotch you company. Know how to work your, your I don't really know how my wallet works. Anyway, so one next episode is was it going to teach me how to use a bridge? But anyway, yeah, I was going to say if we just send him stuff on like a different chain, there's like no way he's ever going to be able to access it. I have it. no idea. So instead uh, of burning funds to the zero address, we're just going to burn him to just send him my uh, wallet. address on any sort of chain that he's not familiar with, and they'll just be gone forever. I oh no, my god! I don't even know how to. Like the other day, someone told me to change whatever an RPC is, and I was like, uh, yeah, I'll just this is like this on. guy. This guy, I can't believe I work with this guy. Anyway, the point is, if if you're a Scotch company out there, and you're looking for a, someone to really really pump your pump your scotch scotch I'm, is terrible well listen i'm old it's enough terrible. to enjoy it, it. it tastes, you're just, you're tastes just a kid like with the backwards hat so my house next, was just on fire and now i'm drinking the bourbon that was in my house that's on fire. all right well let us know wait <laughs> hold on jorge you're supposed to be like let us know in the comments below what do you oh. drink that's that's you know what TikTok look yeah clip. he's right he's right i'm losing cool points here let us know below what you're drinking when you watch this or when you're just... Or he's a gin time. drinker. He looks like a gin drinker. No, I don't. Right, I drink I drink beer mostly and bourbon. Oh, you a Bud Light type Did of guy? you say beer? No, actually, in my in my private life, in my career, <laughs> I travel you the rewind, world drinking beer. Rewind that so it says bear. 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 <laughs> but now the, I wanted to transition... How quickly this podcast declined from... Very high level banking and finance talk. We gave TBC too much to drink. That's that's obviously what we've done wrong here. Even, this is this is just breakfast right here. Let's go. <laughs> God. <laughs> but now I wanted to transition. So we hear yeah, BP. Bud Light. <laughs> okay. Bud Light's a fine beverage. Okay. Anyways, so let's <laughs> up. You had the joyous. Uh, opportunity to represent Beefy at both Consensus and the AVAX uh, Dev Conference in Barcelona. I wanted yep. to know your your takeaways from these wonderful events, or at least let's start with Consensus. What was your takeaway from Consensus? Uh, consensus was great. We actually, I, I'd say, mostly felt energetic. Like people were actually still excited about crypto there. We're Beefy's booth was like the only DeFi booth, though. 
Wow. Uh, consensus is one of those like. So people were excited about crypto, stuff. except crypto people weren't excited to go to consensus. No, just DeFi. DeFi wasn't there. Like representative there was like a lot of like people trying to get into crypto. So accounting firms. Yeah. <laughs> Does that mean? Right. So we're still right. early is what you're saying. <laughs> we're still early. people. I guess accounting yeah. firms would uh, love to see. Blockchains were there. Like it, it was a lot of people like trying to break into the industry. The, the one thing about Web3 is there's a lot of things that we sort of need, uh, like, you know, marketing, PR, accounting, um, a whole bunch of different assets of normal, like corporations and organizations. And we really don't even have that in this space yet. So, you know, there's a lot trying to break into the space and be able to fill a lot of those voids. Um, you mm -hmm. know, as we continue, it was like the crypto market continues to grow uh, and expand. There'll be a lot of opportunities for, you know, traditional needs, like business needs to be able to be you know, uh, taken care of within, you know, especially like, you know, DAOs, uh, who maybe, you know, don't have anybody to kind of fill those roles. So right. it was interesting to see like a lot of like, even, I think one of the conventions I saw, like even Deloitte was there. <laughs> so they're trying to break into the market. Uh, that's for sure. But it was more of that than like, it was like DeFi. People were still excited though, when they saw us and, and everything. I don't know. T TBC, should I talk about the tattoo guy or no? I, if you want, I mean, what at this point, I mean, most of this episode is not going to be published <laughs> anyway. So what the hell's the difference? We'll get it in the edit anyway. Just talk about the tattoo guy, please. All right. So I'll tell you a story. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Can, hurry up. Okay, I'm, I'm dying up. to hear it. Okay. <clears throat> so the last night of the conference, we're trying to find something to do. Let's name the rest of the beef for you guys. And we went to a couple of different uh, later events. And then we went to the club, <laughs> which was like some closing event. And it was kind of boring. It was like the normal like club atmosphere. And crypto events like always have some sort of like DJ club. It must be like a thing, right? You go there and you show up and the music's way too loud. You can't really network. The it's uh bear market, so everything's cash bar. <laughs> so that's so super fun. <laughs> so then you leave, right? And there was like something that said like, Hey, desert disco in Austin. And I'm like, I Let's go try and see what this event is. It was like some crypto event. So it was in central Austin, which is like 30 minute drive. We get in the Uber, we go over to central Austin, get into this place. It looks like it was supposed to be a clubby environment. It ends up being some like, sh you know, straight up like hippie bar, <laughs> which is totally Hippies. cool. It's Austin, awesome, right? <clears throat> everybody love everybody. Uh, we get in, it's all like neon colors, like black lights, like a Homer Simpson, like bug, like picture on the wall. The vending machine had a gun, or like, not the vending machine. Get the guns. claw game, right, the wait, claw wait. game machine had a gun in it. <laughs> yes. It's yes, Texas, Lawrence. right? Like you can win a gun. <laughs> that's that's pretty like amazing. Japanese like N64 <laughs> games. It was pretty, <laughs> it was pretty wild. So it was like Austin, like, I don't know, like five other people in this place. And so we're like, okay, we'll just like grab a drink here and like move on. And so we like grab a drink, go to the patio. And there's like another group of people out there, like six people. <clears throat> so we're standing outside chatting. The group of people walk past us, and for some reason, this last guy just stops there and stares at us. And he's like, "Hey, are you here for like the crypto convention?" I'm like, yeah. Like, he's like, "Who are you with?" I'm like, "Beefy." Have you ever heard of Beefy? He's like, "Never heard of Beefy." I'm like, "Are you here for the crypto convention?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like a, a data analytics firm." And I go, "Okay. Like, what do you do?" He's like, "Oh, like DeFi analytics." Like, never heard of Beefy? No. I'm like, okay. Well, have you, have you heard of like Yearn? He's like, "No." I'm like, so what sort of like DeFi analytics do you actually do? He does the good analytics. <laughs> Obviously, he's very in informed, right. very well informed. He's like, he's like, well, we're breaking into it. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, we're like, you know, give the whole spiel about it. We're like dealing. real. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're like the 27th largest D, you know, DeFi protocol. He's like, oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. So somehow we're talking and he's like, oh, do you think you ever like, you know, have a need for like data? And I like, oh, you never know. Like, you know, it depends what you guys can possibly do. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we're talking. He's like, I'm like, what? Well, you know, would you get a, a beefy tattoo? And he's like, right now? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm like, well, really? Why? He's like, you don't believe me? And I'm like, I'm not saying I don't believe you. I just, you know, why are you getting a tattoo? <laughs> he's like, let's go right now. And I'm like, uh, okay. So <laughs> we get in, we call an Uber. And because, like, it's like at this point, like 10 30 at night, we call an Uber. And uh, we're like, hey, like, do you know like any tattoo places? Like, yeah. So we go up to the road like ten minutes, and they drop us off, and all we see is bars. But we see the one bar has a tattoo parlor all the way in the back. So we walk into this bar, go all the way back to where it says tattoos, 
and we go, hey, our friend we just met would like to get a tattoo of the beefy logo. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, 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 of that logo. That was sick, right? Sick logo. And I'm like, sure, it's sick logo. <laughs> so the guy's like, okay, can we in like five minutes go get a beer? So we go get a beer. And then uh, we, he's like, hey, I'm ready. We go in there and we chat with this guy and he's like, yeah, yeah. We talk about, talks about his like life story. <laughs> and sure enough, guy gets like a big <laughs> beefy cop tattoo right on his ankle wow yeah and then he's like hey what else you guys got going on so then we went to the piano bar <laughs> and then we went and hung out down on sixth street and then he was gone forever just like that just as he came he went <laughs> somewhere out there somewhere out there. Some the country. there's a guy the <laughs> with a cow tattoo on his leg and he has no idea what what it is what well, like you do you wake up the next morning and go how did i get this cow on my leg the best I mean, part is he's not going to remember it. He's going to look at the count and he's going, what the hell is this? <laughs> yeah. He's not going to well, know that it's, you know, a DeFi protocol or anything. I mean, or well, maybe he's yeah. out there getting like other DeFi protocols on him because he's such, he's so legit with his DeFi analytics. But, 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 okay. Like what type of person, like he just decided, hey, yeah, you, you mentioned a tattoo. Let's go do it right now. Talk about down for the moment. He sounded drunk. Let's be honest here, right? I mean, <laughs> there you go. Wezzo's exploiting drunks. He's his. Oh, yeah. He's a, <laughs> he didn't exploit anyone. He went. He well, showed that's up. A, that's the argument, isn't it? He got a tattoo. And you know what? He's going to have an amazing story. When he talks to his parents, he's like, I love crypto, dad. Or No, mom. what's going to happen is Beefy <laughs> has literally changed his life. And he's going to realize he's going to get... A, the easiest APYs he's ever scored in his life. Outperforming all banks, especially First Republic. All right, later. <laughs> all right. We agreed. We're going to talk about that, but we can a little later. But nah, what let's not I, talk about banks. Let's move on. But before we move on from consensus, I wanted to say that there was a really, honestly, I think probably something nobody talked about was a statement that Yatsui made from Animoca Brands. He talked about how so many countries in the world are embr embracing cryptocurrency at this particular moment in terms of regulations and whatever, but that the strategy is actually extremely, extremely fascinating. What he claims is that the reason so many countries are focused on Web3 is because the United States has a monopoly on Web2. Like all the biggest pieces of infrastructure on the internet from Google, Facebook, Amazon, uh, Uber, uh, you know, Lyft, Everything that's massive about the internet or the vast majority of it in Web 2 is in the United States. So this suddenly creates like this new dynamic where countries can create these decentralized applications on Web 3 and possibly benefit from it, whether it's financial or some type of geopolitical reasoning behind it. But I thought that was fascinating. And uh, I was curious if, um, on your guys' takeaway from those thoughts. I mean, he's right. All the biggest companies in the world, or like what everybody uses, are from the U.S. But we'll obviously want to. The U.S. wants to lose that, anyways, when it comes to to Web three. So, <laughs> I mean, I don't I think it's see why move. others are trying to, uh, you know, actually. It's like, not the U.S. bid right? for it. Haven't you guys paid? You never. He wasn't ever paid attention when I talk. When I start to explain <laughs> geopolitics, like blah 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 blah. Right, it's who owns who, right, and who's motivated by what, right? We've we've talked about this in depth. And did we release the first episode? I don't remember. Yes, we did. <laughs> oh, okay. Go back and watch those somewhere in there. But next topic. <laughs> Come on. Just... All right, guys. All right. Well, uh, the next thing I wanted to ask you, Wesso, how was the Avalanche DevCon out in Barcelona? Tell us about that. Have you ever been to Barcelona? Yeah. It's it's one of the most amazing, fun places on earth. Everything tastes good. The drinks are cheap. The people are nice. Everywhere you walk, there's like some type of monument to something or some other. Catalan is a cool language. Learn the hard way. Don't call Barcelona, Spain to a local. They will get super pissed. You call it Catalonia. What happened to you? Well, so I'm with my fiance. And we were out by a, a pizza place. We were really tired and, and hungry. And so we ordered some food. We're eating. And we just overhear this couple. And they re realized that we're from the U.S. So I started engaging with them in Spanish. And 
just say, just saying stuff like, ah, nos encantamos Barcelona. And, and then I looked at him in the eyes, this guy, and I said, y nos encantamos España. And the guy looks at me with like a dead face and goes, no estás en España, estás en Catalonia, coño. I'm like, hey. I, I heard like, there's a lot of history. There's a lot of history. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of history. And I knew that in the back of my head. But after a few drinks, delicious food, stuff just slips out. And I didn't even think. But I was very fortunate because right after, he looks at me. And he's like, it's okay. Just don't do it again. I was like, all right. I won't do it again. I won't do it again. <laughs> okay. But, I mean, it's it's beautiful. For anyone watching, the Catalonia or Spain are not sponsors of the show. They did not pay us to shill this beautiful country. It's just, I love Barcelona. It's an amazing place. How did you enjoy it? Well, it was a pain in the ass getting out there. I had to like rebook my flight like four times uh, on the same day because apparently no airlines work properly. Um, they like probably have like one airplane and if one of them breaks down, the entire like <laughs> oh my God. next like five flights just cancel themselves. Uh, so I didn't get there in there until like probably like 12 or 13 hours after I was supposed to. Mm-hmm. So that kind of centralized the airlines. Honestly, it's like the worst industry. The worst. Like, I, I don't know how we fix it. But like, you replace Pete Buttigieg. Bitcoin fixes this. I, I'm sure somehow, some way. Hey, I agree. Let's, uh, yeah. let's, where's you, Mac, Maxis out there? Post your, yeah. fixing uh, the airlines. Figure, figure it out. Centralize the airlines. Remove, uh, <laughs> like, remove the regulations. Garbage. Let's go. <laughs> Trash. So once I got to Barcelona, <laughs> it was fantastic. I mean, Barcelona is like the, the city. It's like literally like, feels like many cities within like a large city. Yeah. And every single alleyway you go down, is like a scenic picture like these like balconies and people hanging in the laundry and bars and restaurants and like the architecture of all the buildings there beautiful uh, when we go to the conference people hanging laundry was it, i mean but like gorgeous. it was like to, it what it was in a yeah. way it was i know what you mean i know what you mean you're such a hipster man get out of here with that i feel like yes Yes. Back I'm, when I was a poor child, we used to hang our laundry and I never thought it was scenic not everybody lives in, in the basement <laughs> their entire life tbc you, you guys are so entitled. Your whole generation. Okay. Lord. So, anyways, <laughs> we had the the convention itself was next to, I guess, the palace. So there's like this gigantic palace um, that you can go mm-hmm. and, like, I guess, it has museums and stuff in it. But next to it is like if it's like a little village that's attached to the palace. So, I mean, exactly what you would think, like you see from like a Disney movie, right? Like there's like this like, you know, cobblestone like little streets. And uh, like a little church and little shops and everything like that in this village. That's where the actual convention was. So when you walk in, in the courtyard of this like little village is the Avalanche Convention. Wow. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, like, and there's like little couches and boots and everything. And so I'd say like being able to network and stuff was a little bit tough because you're like, instead of having like a traditional booth, like you're sitting on like, a couch and there were just like random people just like relaxing on your couch that you're trying to to utilize for networking mm-hmm. um but it, it was like completely packed and i felt wow. like i wasn't sure what to expect especially with like the market conditions um but it felt like everybody maybe it was because it was barcelona right people were like yeah hey, we're gonna go to barcelona the people were there and people were there to, to talk business and talk shop and it was like the most beautiful venue to have a conference that you can go to i mean like the first day, I think they were like shaving off Iberico ham, like right off the leg, so you can come up and like, and eat it. Oh, you like that? As you, I I like it shaved directly off the leg. Oh, it's here my we plates. go. <laughs> One in Spain, so I have Catalonia. See, I did it again. <laughs> as as you walk through these like city streets, though, at the convention, so like it was like half open for tourists to like walk through because I guess it's like a tourist attraction normally. Um, but then for the people who are there for the convention, obviously you can walk through this whole like village and there would be like these little like spots that you stop off of. And one would be like, here's where like some talks are going on. And then, oh, here's like another like event space to like just relax and chill. And they had massages and what <laughs> juice, juice bars and people playing like games. And then there was like the main stage, which is where, um, we had like, uh, my panel, which was like this big, huge I don't like theater area. And then they had like a VIP lounge that was in an old church. So like you'd walk in and then you see all the pews and the vestibule and then you like go to the side and there's like a little courtyard area and everybody's just like hanging out in the church courtyard 
you know, talking shop in the VIP layer. It was really, it was really like an interesting experience. Definitely different than all the other conventions I've been to. I mean, no, it sounds amazing. Like I'm just picturing walking around, hearing some dude talk about pumping his meme coin to the moon and then getting a massage while all that is happening. That sounds. Uh, I mean, there were people that luxury. party. So in, in Barcelona, the nightclubs don't get actually going until like 1 a.m. So, and nobody eats dinner till like 9 p.m. So most of the time you're there, if you get to the convention early, there's like nobody there. But as you continue to progress along the day, everybody starts to get in little party mode. 3 p.m. the wine comes out and the people party until like the middle of the night. Like <laughs> it's crazy there. I don't wow. know how anybody gets any work done. <laughs> no, I mean, but, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was going to say, but when we walked, so uh, I was there with Kexley, which is another uh, one of our Sleety developers. And when we walked in, it was like constant uh, people to talk to. There was all of like a ton of our, our Avalanche partners were there. People who weren't even from the Avalanche ecosystem, but just like wanted to kind of connect and meet people from the Avalanche ecosystem were there. Uh, so as like on the business side, it's super impactful for us because, you know, I, I think there's like that personal relationship you sort of miss mm -hmm. in this industry. A lot of it is, you know, even like I think a majority of our team is anonymous and then you don't really get to see people in person. You're talking over chat, telegram. Right. Um, you know, people do even want to do like voice chat. So when you actually get to go there and, and meet people, especially people that you've been talking to for like a year or two years in person, you meet them for the first time. Uh, it's something a little bit special. I think <laughs> you like build that personal relationship. Uh, so I think like <laughs> the conventions that we go to on the, on the relationship building side, the partnership side, they're very, very impactful. And I mean, what strikes me is that we are, we are in like a massive, I, I still consider a bear market for the most part. And that event people flew to and filled up this entire venue for avalanche i mean that's that's fascinating um when well, people are still committed to building so there's yeah. a lot of new protocols there Whoa. people that are like building completely brand new concepts uh, options protocols um you know people building uh, you know new styles of perpetuals like it, there was a whole bunch of i think now we're seeing the next wave of DeFi, uh sort of experimenting and meeting each other there so yeah, that's amazing. I mean, I'm just happy to hear that there's so much still going on in Avalanche. I mean, we'll see where it takes the protocol. And don't forget that we here at Beefy, we're also there. So you can find a, you can find our pools there too. Somewhere. So Wes, so tell me about your experience breaking Beefy into, into ZK Sync. How's it going so far? Is the experience very seamless? Is it easy to use? <laughs> Be uh, honest, no. 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 And... No. <laughs> wow. It's uh, so obviously ZK Sync is EVM, <laughs> uh, but it's not exactly the same as it is deploying in other chains. First of all, it's definitely expensive. I think everybody kind of goes <clears throat> and thinks it's going to be like super cheap. It, it's not. It's uh, it's an early chain. It needs a lot of adoption to happen. Similar to like when Arbitrum first started, mm -hmm. Arbitrum was very, very expensive when it didn't have as many users. Uh, it seems. ZK Sync's facing similar issues. It needs a lot more users in order to lower gas costs. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now, people are sort of like, you know, coming in, they want to deposit it to Beefy Vaults. They're like, oh my God, I, why is this so expensive? Uh, and it's just like part of the growing pains of an early chain trying to gain adoption. But I think that they'll get past that. Also, like deploying contracts on ZK Sync is sort of, sort of a pain. We had to like build a whole separate, you know, repo, contracts repo in order to actually deploy there um, just because of the technology. Uh, and even some contracts aren't exactly adaptable for, for ZK Sync. Essentially, you have to change some of the structure because the underlying um, op codes aren't the same. I don't want to get too technical or else TBC will yell at me, but essentially we can't, we can't just do like for like 100%. We had to change a little bit of thing uh, in order to accommodate. But I, I honestly believe that like, you know, once it gets a little bit more broader adoption, more protocols start to de uh, develop there and it starts to get like a lot more usage. Uh, the chain itself is super quick uh, when it comes to transactions. Uh, I think that we can, like the, the gas pricing will start to drop and, and it'll definitely have its own like little uh, run. At least I think the whole ZK, you know, um, you know, ZK VM, ZK Sync, all those will have like a little run at some point. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm still somewhat skeptical about... Um... I don't know if po Polygon would have a, a run over that, but I think ZK Sync will just because 
at some point a token gets the token will be airdropped. So all these people are going to have it. People are going to speculate, and yeah, but the go on the Polygon um, CEO or whatever just speculated that there will be a zk EVM airdrop. Oh really? Okay, I missed that. See, ladies and gentlemen, some, I don't know everything. About that. He said he just said you never know. <laughs> but I, I honestly think that like I mean the Polygon has a tremendous community. I think that at some point they'll be. Especially they're they're getting oracles, they're getting I think Gnosis, they're getting a lot, a lot of the core infrastructure that's needed for DeFi on zkVM. Once those protocols start to all that core infrastructure is launched and protocols start integrating, I think you'll start to see at least a burst in the ecosystem. But everything, uh, I mean, you saw Arbitrum. You know, when you do airdrops, you do grant programs. You can really start to get activity. So we'll see if that goodness. happens. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. I mean. <laughs> Airdrops are, I mean, for me, I like, if I'm being honest, if I get an airdrop, I just sell. Like, I'm just that guy. Uh, doesn't mean I won't explore the chain, but it's a great way to just get users. Did you, did you vote on the recent proposal? I could have used your assistance. Anyway, I good news is I I think I might have blocked Richard, actually. I might have just, just got rid of him. Go back to the post. Well, how are we going to go to the convention now? Well, I'll just buy the billboard on the side of the Vegas building. That's no problem. We we met somebody at last consensus. Yeah, you never. That's a story we'll have to tell. Maybe you should wait to next episode, and Jorge could use this as a teaser if he edits it properly to find out how the homeless guy attacked you, and it he might have been me. Richard Hart. Promise me hot tubs full of women, <laughs> and that we'd be displayed on the the largest <laughs> yeah. TV screen in the world on the side of the Las Vegas building. This was a homeless person or Richard Hart? Well, he looks homeless <laughs> and on drugs. Probably on trucks. It's a possibility. But we have enough slander lawsuits against us during this episode. Oh, wow. I mean, I did Next, up, <laughs> next topic. Let's okay. keep moving. We're so, almost done here. Uh, one thing, uh, I didn't want to dive like too deep into politics, but to just keep things simple, oh, God. I do think it's important that we talk about how the Chamber of Commerce is slamming the SEC, siding with Coinbase in the middle of their lawsuit. Do you guys think that this is the part in... in that this is a, a new hope, like in Star Wars, like we're going to see, hopefully, some kind of clarity and change for things to get no. better in the U.S. No. Yeah, it's Next just a topic. piece of the story. Yeah, it's just it's all politics. We don't got time for that. That's why we're in DeFi. We're just kind of doing our own thing and minding our own business. And It, it is to... good to see, like, at least one entity come out and say, hey, like, SEC, you should probably, like, get your shit together. I mean. But that's it. That's all it is. I mean. Who knows yeah, what No one has to happens. listen to them, right? Like. No, no, it There's was no like when he, Gary went up and, and like talked for hours and everybody grilled him and were like, oh, look at all these like really mean things we said to Gary. It doesn't mean shit. It doesn't it mean anything. Nothing. It means nothing. It's political yeah. theater. Move on. Well, the one uh, thing that I'll say is different about this is that the Chamber of Commerce is, is the entity that represents over 300,000 businesses in the United States. So if the Chamber of Commerce makes a statement, it's not necessarily be on crypto's behalf. It's because all the organizations that contribute something to the chamber, a majority of them yeah. are saying, hey, this no, this seems like this is a bad idea to push this stuff out. It's obviously a positive thing, but will it actually affect anything? Probably not. Yeah, so Jorge, look at you thinking issue. government works. What's what but it but it's a good it's a good it's a good I'm out of new story. I'm out of scotch. I'm gonna I'll be right back. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of The DeFi. It was so much fun to shoot. I absolutely loved it. And with that being said, don't forget that this show is produced by Beefy, the multi-chain yield optimizer located on 20 different chains with some of the most competitive yield in all of DeFi. If you have crypto, consider using Beefy. We're always bullish. Hey, and if you enjoyed this episode, you should definitely check out our first episode. It was a lot of fun also, and I think you'd definitely enjoy it. And with that being said, please like and subscribe and follow us for more. Thank you so much. Cheers.